To say that the past three years was challenging is an understatement. The pandemic exposed the many holes in our social safety net and may have increased income inequality, but it was a golden opportunity as it highlighted and fast-tracked the critical enablers for the realization of a better future. As the newly appointed chairperson of the Regional Development Council of Northern Mindanao, Governor Imelda Quibranza de Maporo takes on an enormous task of leading the region towards healing and sustainable recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. She is confident that the Regional Development Council can shepherd Northern Mindanao towards a green, resilient, inclusive, and sustainable recovery. The choices that the Council makes today are critical, so here are the development priorities of the RDC Chair for the years 2022 to 2025, a small yet significant window where the Council hopes to effect positive lasting change in Region 10. These priorities are aligned with the second base camp towards achieving ambition natin 2040 of a Matatag, Maginhawa, at Panatag na Buhay. The Philippine Northern Mindanao Regional Development Plan Strategic Frameworks 2023 to 2028. She recognizes that these successor plans will operationalize the eight point agenda of the Marcos administration, which aims to accelerate job creation and reduce poverty. It is imperative that we need to scale up our position as one of the top preferred investment areas in the country along agriculture agribusiness, ICT, tourism, and technology. She calls on everybody to be aggressive and engage with our Make It Happen in Northern Mindanao for the Philippines campaign. Within this term, the Council shall be launching the Northern Mindanao Regional Government Center. This shall locate regional line agencies and offices in one place, hence streamlining and facilitating intergovernment processes. Third, with the expected increase in investments and being true to our vision as gateway and leading industrial hub in the Philippines, the RDC Chair asks an endeavor for the increased occupancy of locators in the Fibidec Industrial Estate. Alongside said estate, the Metro Iligan Regional Agro-Industrial Center in Lanao del Norte is an emerging consolidation center that is targeted to operationalize within this term. The FIVEDEC Industrial Estate and Mirai will set in motion our mid-term goal of economic transformation, thus creating more and better jobs. She also expresses the need to expand the Mindanao Container Terminal. The RDC Chair asks to support policies and projects that makes its operations more efficient and environment-friendly for reduced emissions, allowing the Council to hit both productivity and sustainability targets. Fifth, echoing the priorities of the past administrations, the completion of the Mindanao Logistics Infrastructure Network shall be a priority, since this will further attract potential investors who might opt to set up their business in the region. The same level of importance shall be allotted for the completion of the Bangal Bay Bridge Project by next year and its allied projects, the upgrade and expansion of the Legindingan Airport Development Project and the completion of the Bukidnon Airport Development Project whose commercial operation will start by 2025. Indeed, mobility is essential to economic and social development. It enables people to access goods, services, and information as well as jobs and markets. This term will also shepherd and push for other major infrastructure projects, such as on upgrading of major ports. Seventh, given the urgency of the climate crisis and the critical role of the energy sector in economic development, she expresses that it is more important now than ever 
to invest in renewable energy. The Agus 3 hydroelectric power project is among the top of her agenda. The new power plant would avert any looming energy crisis in Mindanao and would also create more employment opportunities. Eighth is the passage of a law creating the Metro Cagayan de Masamis Development Authority. Among the spatial strategies in the development plan is regional agglomeration. The Council already has the master plan for the sustainable urban infrastructure development in Metropolitan Cagayan de Oro. The next step is to establish the entity who will be on top of its plan implementation as well as steer the metro to achieve its spatial and functional role in the region, Mindanao, and the country as a whole. Low agricultural productivity remains one of the major challenges that beset this sector. The RDC Chair probes to champion a cluster-based and inclusive value chain approach in the agriculture, industry, and services sectors through the Northern Mindanao Regional Inclusive Industry Cluster Roadmap 2023-2025. Specifically, the region will champion the growth and development of the following priority commodities and industries, abaca and other sources of fiber, coconut, fishery and fishery byproducts, aquamarine products, bamboo, salt, vegetables and fruits, and ecotourism. She wishes to complete the Balik Provincia Bagong Pag-asa Program housing project in Kauswagan, Lano del Norte, particularly the road component and its allied services. As one of the pilot areas for said program, the RDC Chair asks all hands on deck in ensuring the continuous improvement of economies and quality of life in the provinces. It is her intention that Lanao del Norte be a model of an empowered local government that effectively manages crisis and build resilient community. The pandemic brought to light the need for accessibility to specialized healthcare in strategic areas in the region. Hence, the Council shall prioritize the implementation of regional specialty hospitals, heart, kidney, and lung centers, the establishment of Amaypakpak specialty centers, heart to lung, renal, eye, cancer, and trauma, the construction of mental health facility in Cagayan de Oro City, and the upgrading of Lanao del Norte Provincial Hospital. In all of these endeavors, partnership and collaboration are critical. We can only realize the Filipinos' vision of a matatag maginhawa at panatag na buhay through strong and inclusive partnership. Echoing the current administration's agenda, let's not politicize, let's unite, let us be one para bumagon ang Pilipinas. With the memberships of the Regional Development Council and its committees, there is no doubt that we will be successful in this term. In Governor Angin's own words, Salamat kaayo sa inyong pagsali.